Leading up to the war, the U.S. Navy had made a few changes to prepare for war readiness. The entirety of the U.S. Navy could be defined in three parts. The Navy Department, which was the headquarters of the U.S. Navy. This was made up of the Secretary of the Navy and their executive assistants and offices, the Office of the Chief of Naval Operations, the bureaus and boards of the Navy, and the headquarters of the Marine Corps, which is under the Department of the Navy. The Shore Establishment was the activities of the U.S. Navy ashore. Their mission is to create, maintain, and support the operation forces. The operating forces, known as the fleet, all of the surface warfare, naval aviation, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard, in a time of war, were under this category. The Secretary of the Navy was the overseer of the entirety of the U.S. Navy. They reported directly to the President, and practically all policy matters crossed their desk for approval. Under the SECNAV, the command splits between civilian and military. On the military side, there's the Chief of Naval Operations in charge of all operating forces and naval shore establishments. On the other side, you have the Assistant and Undersecretaries to help with logistical control. At the turn of the century, people were looking for a more organized Navy which was growing in complexity. In turn, recognition of four main tasks were defined for the mission of the Navy. Policy control, Naval command, logistics administration and control, and business administration. Policy control fell into the hands of the highest overseer of the Navy, the Secretary of the Navy. The SECNAV and his subordinates were responsible for the interpretation and application of national and military policy within the Navy. Naval command is the task of commanding the operating forces or fleets within the U.S. Navy and their missions. It involves organizing and training the forces as well as planning their objectives. Logistics administration and control falls into two categories, consumer logistics and producer logistics. Consumer logistics is the what, when, and where of producing materials, training, and other activities. The primary overseer of consumer logistics rests with the chief of naval operations. Producer logistics is the how of those same activities. Producer logistics were mostly carried out by SECNAV civilian assistants. Business administration is the sound business decisions that need to be made in order to get the most out of the Navy's budget and other areas. This also generally fell under the SECNAV's department. Let's take a deeper look into how the Naval Operating Forces under the Commander-in-Chief, the U.S. Fleet, was structured. Under the Fleet Chief's command were the Operating Forces, the Shore Establishment, and the Bureaus. Some of these commands were shared with the Assistant Under Secretaries. The Operating Forces were commanded by the Fleet Chief, also known as the Chief of Naval Operations. Reporting from under them were the Deputy CNOs comprised of Deputy CNO for Air, DCNO for Operations, DCNO for Administration, DCNO for Personnel, and DCNO for Logistics. Chief of Staff and Deputy Chief of Staff and Assistant Chiefs for the Fleet. These positions directly influenced the operations of the fleet. The fleet was made up of smaller units and fleets within them. The Pacific Fleet and Pacific Ocean Area Organizations. The latter contained task forces and frontier forces. The Atlantic Fleet. The U.S. Naval Forces in Europe and the 12th Fleet. The Western, Eastern, Caribbean, and Gulf Sea Frontiers. Each of these arenas had task forces, numbered fleets, and other operations forces within them. The bureaus were governed by both of the Chief of Naval Operations and Undersecretaries. They consisted of the Bureau of Yard and Docks, Ships, Supplies and Accounts, Ordnance, Medicine and Surgery, Naval Personnel, Aeronautics, and Marine Corps Headquarters. These bureaus were individually in charge of what their name stated, so the Bureau of Ships would be responsible for the creation and maintenance of ships and so on. Each bureau would have a Chief and Assistant Chief. Under these chiefs, there would be varying divisions or units tasked with the supply of whatever their bureau was providing. Under the command of both sectors again is the shore establishment. The shore establishment was divided into different naval districts, mainly in the continental United States. Each district was under the command of a high-ranking commandant. As stated before, the shore establishment was responsible for essentially getting the operating forces what they needed when they needed it. Through the entirety of the Second World War, the organization of the U.S. Navy remained largely the same. 
It would take until the Cold War for large changes to be made within the organization of the Navy. Leave a comment down below on what you want to see next, and thank you and have a great day.